everyone, it's Kelsey here. So I've got the new book page for March here. And to be honest, not only was this kind of a thin month, it was a month that I didn't have a whole lot that I was interested in, um, which is kind of okay because I have a ton of books um, on my table, kitchen table, end table, nightstand, everything everywhere. I have books everywhere. Um, so it's really okay that there's not a ton of stuff that I'm excited about this month. Um, but I thought I would just run through um, a couple of the things that I'm looking forward to this month. So this will be a pretty short video. As you can tell, I'm skipping lots of pages. Um, first of all, this under the book clubs column, China Dolls, um, is a very popular one. And I think it might, that might be the paperback cover. Um, yeah, $16. So I read China Dolls, um, I don't know, it's been a few months, um, but it was really good. It's by the author Lisa C, and I just think everything she writes is brilliant, um, and I just really love reading about like the Chinese-American um, history. Um, I just, I don't know, some part of me thinks it's really, really interesting. I don't know why like specifically that genre and there's not a ton in that genre that I've found so if you know of any recommendations that are like Lisa C's novels I would love to hear them um but this book is set in World War II um in San Francisco and it follows the life of three young Asian American women and they all get jobs in um a nightclub and then it kind of follows their lives from there so Anyway, really, really good. I would definitely recommend that. Um, second, the this series, The Winner's Curse, I read. I loved it. I'm going to have to reread it because I just loved it so much that I like kind of raced through it. Um, but The Winner's Crime, the sequel, is coming out, and this is part of a trilogy. So, um, yeah, I really want the third book to be out, but it's not. So, if you really like reading young adult books, this is definitely one of my favorites so far. Um, skipping, um, this book is by Gretchen Rubin. It's called Better Than Before, Mastering the Habits of Our Everyday Life. Um, I read her first book, The Happiness Project, and I, I mostly liked it. The second book, I just could not get through, um, and now she's got a new book. She may have, this may be her fourth book. I can't remember. Um, but... It's just a little too technical for me. I really like some of the tips she gave in her first book about happiness and how to make yourself happier. Um, but it just went a little bit too much in like the science side of things for me. Um, but I did read this article and one thing that I thought was interesting is um, the interviewer was talking about how she has um, a desire for sweets. And Ruben actually tells her, if you don't have the first one, it goes away. The thing about sweets is the desire for it feeds on itself. If you don't have the first one, it goes away. If you have just one chocolate covered almond, you want to have 15. One thing to try would be to say, I just don't eat that at work. So I thought that was really good advice and that's something that I took away from this article. So um, if you loved her last books, by all means, um, this one sounds like it could be good. So check it out. Better Than Before by Gretchen Rubin. Um, this book sounded good to me. It's called A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I'm sure I butchered that name. I apologize. Um, this book is 736 pages, which honestly scares even me because I, I'm not really scared of big books, but that's an especially large one. But it follows a group of four friends, four college roommates that, um just kind of their their life story college and on and what they do and it talks about um romance and their careers and i guess um one or more of them have a drug addiction and just kind of their struggles i really like that style of book i know it's definitely not for everyone some people prefer more action but i hope that my library gets that because that sounds like one that i want to read um this one the good girl is now available in paperback. I read this when it was in hardback this fall. And 
it was all right. I didn't think it was as good as I wanted it to be, but the ending had kind of a twist like right at the very end that I really did not see coming. Um, but I felt it could have done more in the book, but still I would have gave it like three and a half, four stars. Um, and then again, you can see I'm just kind of skipping a bunch of pages cause yeah, not not a whole lot interested me. Um, this book called The Bookseller by Cynthia Swan. Um, I can't exactly tell. It talks about um, Kitty Miller. She lives in, um, I think, Denver. And it's 1962. She's an unmarried wom woman. But after she... After a failed long-term relationship, Kitty has come to accept that life isn't always what meant to be as we imagine. So she lives in Denver with a, her best friend. They call each other sister, um, and they own a bookshop. But it kind of seems like maybe she's living a dream, literally, um, because then it says, Although Catherine once ran a su successful business with Frida, she has traded the nickname Kitty for the more grown-up Catherine and ceded her independence for a suburban home, husband, and children. It seems she has it all. So I, she, it, it talks about how she has one character and two distinctive lives. So I can't tell, is it kind of a dream that she's dreaming and it's becoming reality? Or is it that was in her past and she dreams about it now? I can't quite tell. But it sounds really good. So, the bookseller. Um, and then this book, Fear Cone Manor by Kate Riordan, um, 1930s, a 22 year old girl, um, becomes pregnant out of wedlock. So her mother sends her to the countryside in England, um, to have the baby and she's going to give the baby up to an orphanage. But the girl, whenever she makes it to the manor, um, She's trying to figure out the secrets in the past and discovers that 30 years ago, another pregnant woman suffered a tragedy on the estate. So, you know, obviously mystery element to it, but that sounds really good. I love historical fiction, so that would be a fun choice for me. And that might be it. That's it. So, yeah. Um, I have a feeling March isn't a very big book month because... People feel like spring is coming, so we're not ready to like have a beach read or a summer read, and we're not ready to snuggle under the covers with a book. I have a feeling that's why it's so thin this month. Just not a lot of good books coming out. So, but like I said, I've got plenty to read. I actually had made a video um, kind of going over all of my books that I read in January and just giving a quick synopsis and review of them. Just brief, brief, brief. Um, and my video camera died, or it, it didn't die, it shuts off automatically, um, but it doesn't signal you when it does, so, yeah, so I lost most of that video in between, and then my camera died because the battery wouldn't stay on, so even when I was trying to continue, it didn't work, so, yeah, maybe I'll go back and redo that, but I'm, I am going to do a February recap, even if I don't go back to January, so, you guys will know what I've been reading this month and I will um, let you know what I'm going to read in March. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again soon and leave me a note below. What are you looking forward to coming out in the month of March? Let me know. Maybe I'll want to read it too. Have a great day guys.